Welcome to Quack & Co. Thank you for being here. This is the channel where every video is 10 minutes or less guaranteed, even if we're doing a gameplay, how to play, unboxing, review, etc. and so forth. And I'm giving you an exclusive first look or sneak peek at Title Blades The Rise of the Unfolders. This is Title Blades 2 and it is nothing like the original. Now, we just got finished doing a series of gameplay videos for over on the main channel, along with a preview and a larger showcase, but in this video, I want to give you, the people who are paying attention, who discovered this uh, channel out in the ether, a chance to get a look at five elements of this game that I am the most excited about. Now, I still have a six story or a six uh, chapter campaign to play through here in the prototype that we're working with. And I'm sure I'll be diving in more as the game develops and as we approach the Kickstarter launch in February. But, the five things I personally am most excited about. Let's start with the lore. So, Tidal Blades 2 was inspired or built off the concept of this world that the team over at Skybound, and specifically like James Hudson and uh, Mr. and Mrs. or Mr. Cuttington, which is a uh, husband and wife artistic team, they built this incredible environment. And throughout Tidal Blades, the very first original Kickstarter, one of the things that they did that was a twist or innovative on the Kickstarter space was they released narrative updates with every single post. Tidal Blades got a community of people excited not only about a dice kind of a dice chaining and uh, worker placement game but they got a community of people excited about the world they created and i was one of those people the idea of this artwork and this vibrant kind of coastal uh atmosphere is now bridging into a rpg dungeon crawl in this kickstarter there's going to be a full i believe standalone rpg system and there's going to be title blades too which is going to be a dungeon crawl where you're working and programming and building your characters and going through a narrative and the writing already is so good. You start the very first chapter and I won't spoil really anything here, but you start the first chapter as newly instigated or initiated title blades, having just completed the original game and finally overcome all the challenges in your pathway to be qualified for well, the technology and the responsibility of protecting the city. And then the rift starts causing problems. And you're on this epic quest and journey to not only defend and protect, but also discover what is happening here in your home. And this is going to lead you to vibrant worlds and across some uh, interesting planes. So that's the first thing that I'm excited about. The second thing I'm excited about is actually going to be the way that Tidal Blades, in terms of a dungeon crawl, starts dif differentiating itself. That's going to be here with the programming slot. You see, everyone is going to have their own board, and this is going to be where you take your actions throughout the course of the game. You'll be drawing up from your customized deck of cards, which do upgrade as over the course of the game for every single specific character, and you'll be placing these cards down to not only set and engage your initiative, but also then take and resolve your actions. You'll resolve a column and a row, and this constant programming, this build, ebb, and flow is really nice. It gives you the chance to escalate and feel like you do major things. It gives you a constant growing and receding pattern throughout the course of play, which is a, is a structure or pattern that I find really engaging, and it keeps me involved in the gameplay even when it's my other player's turn. I'm always looking and trying to figure out the puzzle that I'm trying to solve. How far can I move? How much damage can I do? When and where can I twist and use the resources that I have to push myself a little bit farther? And the cool thing, the ebb and flow that's here, is that when you use your third card in a column or a row, that entire pocket's going to clear. Setting your board back to zero as if you've become a little bit exhausted or winded from the actions you just took. But then you get to start rebuilding it again. I love this programming and I, I find it really engaging for a dungeon crawl like experience. It's a puzzle that I don't know that I've seen other games in this genre uh, do or execute on as nicely as Tidal Blades 2 is doing. The third thing is going to tie back to the first, but it cannot be said enough just how gorgeous this game is. I mean, Tidal Blades 1 was a immaculate production, right? If you got the, the deluxified edition of that game, it was mind-blowing to open it up with the inserts and the storage trays and the artwork and the lore book. And 
the thing I gravita gravitated to the most above everything was that lore book. I pulled it open and even in the unboxing video, I'm reading through the lore, getting history, getting background and looking at the pictures. And it was so, so incredible. So here with Title Blades 2, we're getting that and more. I'm really excited about having a dungeon crawl that exists in an atmosphere that isn't dark and bleak or epic or old school high fantasy. Like this is a world that we've never explored before in this genre of game, which might make it harder to capture some people's attention. But for me, it's one of those things where if another game hasn't done it and hasn't dove into it, there's so much opportunity to play here. I mean, the crabs and the tentacles and the, the weird abominations of sea creatures kind of coming through this portal. And it doesn't have to all be clean and nice and pretty, even though the artwork certainly is. There's still elements of darkness and brutality to this story that we're playing. But it's also just beautiful. The fourth thing that I'm going to be excited about is the way that we get wounded. I really like the way you get hurt throughout the course of the game. You see, as you take damage throughout a single play, you'll start adding wound cards to your board. They block off your good, restrict your ability to start playing and activating new cards, and those will slowly be tallied here on your character sheet. And on this sheet, every time you pass a wound zone, a location where you get uh, extra wounds or you've taken extra damage, you'll get scars mixed into your deck. This is going to be cards that when you pull them, you play immediately to your player tableau, and they're going to add debuffs or restrictions or make this puzzle you're solving even harder, and that lives with you throughout the course of the game and throughout the course of the campaign. That, for me, is really compelling. When do you heal? When do you spend precious resources and, resources and time in order to go back and fix some of the mistakes you've had? When do you retry or restart a level because you just cannot leave this level with an additional two or three wounds because that means you're taking scars and scars are brutal. I like the way that this progresses with you and the way it not only integrates into a thematic sense and doesn't add a bunch of middling rules that you have to pay attention to. Instead, it adds core elements and debuffs your deck just a little bit, just enough that you have to deal with it when you play. And finally, the last thing, the fifth thing that I'm super excited about is going to be our character leveling system. You get to play with all of the classic characters from the original Title Blades and we'll see if there's more that show up. I have no inside information on that. But the way that each character levels is going to be a personalized deck and a personalized set of missions. As you play, you're trying to accomplish your feats. And as you accomplish those feats, you can spend those resources and those skills on various different leveling pathways to get new cards, to buff your base skills, to go ahead and spend your fruit or XP to heal or level up. And this is, for me, such a cool system. I'm really excited to explore every single narrative pathway with every single character. And just in the base game, I mean, round one without any upgraded cards or any narrative driven choices it still felt like both characters are operating and playing vastly different and that to me is super exciting so there you have it five things that i'm super excited about for title blades 2 let me know what you think and if this is the first time you found this channel hit the subscribe button because this is quack and co it's like nothing you've ever